Merci beaucoup. C'est un privilège. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here today, and I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizers for inviting me to speak and for the interest that they have shown in our program called M Diabetes or M Diabetes. This is a program where we use a mobile telephone to have better prevention and management of diabetes. This is an application of a worldwide uh, program uh, called Be Healthy, Be Mobile, and it's a uh, it's a joint effort by the World Health Organization and the International Telecommunications Union as part of M Health. Now, M Health has been effective in Africa with better access to health care, and that is for diabetes and treatment. Now, eight kilometers is the average distance that an African in a rural area has to travel to get to a health care center. And now that we have these mobile healthcare solutions, twice as many people in rural areas now have access to health care. And the, uh, the International Telecommunications Union and the WHO have taken advantage of the worldwide spreading of mobile telephones to have this Be Healthy, Be Mobile application. And we've got uh, M cessation to stop smoking and M cervica for uh, combating cervical cancer in Zambia. In 2012, at the World Health uh, Meeting, Senegal said that it was interested in adapting this for non-communicable diseases, and we took the example of type 2 diabetes. Now, why the choice of diabetes is because of the prevalence. Look at it here, 3.4 percent according to the latest study done in Senegal. That's the STEPS study. But we think this is underestimated because half of patients are not diagnosed and a high proportion of the uh, people do not even know what the risk factors are or even what the symptoms are. And we've been colonized by Coca-Cola, and obesity is not considered as a risk factor, and it's certainly not considered to be a disease. Uh, obesity is a sign that you are affluent, and it's a criterion of beauty for women. As uh, we can see in the Miss, Miss Jongama in our language, that means the Senegalese woman who's got a good uh, overweight uh, state. And you can see that I'm not an example of that. And then we have a shortage of infrastructure and qualified human resources. Here we have the uh, center where I am in charge of the department, and that's uh, the uh, Center for Diabetes Treatment in Senegal, and we've gone over capacity. And uh, it's a... Uh, uh, had to have additional areas, but then for the rest of the country, we've got medical deserts, and so there's very little knowledge available and very little healthcare available, particularly in rural areas. And so decentralization is a key priority for us. We need to have decentralization, but we need to have innovative strategies and at a low cost uh, because of our limited resources so that uh, prevention and management of diabetes can be available for the greatest number of people possible. And this is what we have tried to do. And we had an opportunity, and that is the penetration of mobile telephones in Senegal. It's greater than it is in the uh, sub-Saharan Africa in general. We think that 83 percent of people in Senegal have a mobile telephone, and 40 percent of those are smartphones. And the companies certainly understood that uh, before uh, the medical sector understood it, because uh, commercial companies uh, had access to communities that they couldn't access before, and they've been able to use that for marketing. So now M Diabetes has the general objective of using the potential of telephones, mobile telephones, to counter the explosion of diabetes in Senegal. Now, for people who are at risk of diabetes, we want to prevent the diabetes occurring. For those who are already known to be diabetic, we want to have better patient management, better patient of the disease, avoid complications, have better quality of life. And for healthcare professionals, we obviously want to have training on how to manage diabetes. Now, for organization, the governance is done with a steering committee, an operational committee, committee and a project team. And the project team has four subject-based committees. One is on M uh, awareness raising for the general public. Then there's M education, which is for diabetic patients. And there's an M formation, which is training for healthcare professionals, and M suivi, M monitoring for professionals involved. M diabetes was officially launched in November 2013. This was on World Diabetes Day. 
and you can see on the right that it was the patient association that was really involved in this and there we had experts um, from WHO and from the International Telecommunications Union that also were there with Senegal. And the implementation started with a document being drawn up which showed a multi-sectoral approach. As you know, M-Health is an interesting area, but a great deal of work needed to be done on this multi-sectoral approach so that everything could be interoperable, so that the partners could be in contact with one another and get them to support the initiative. And so we invited them all to a preparatory workshop We uh, looked at ethical questions and we got uh, um, approval from the Ethics Committee and the Data um, Monitoring Committee, the Personal Data Committee, and we managed to get the platform and they uh, got the message across. The subject-based committees had uh, SMS messages, uh, text messages for target uh, messages and target groups, and we tested them in simulated uh, setting, and then they were tested in real life, uh, doing this through health education. And each one had a link to a website providing further information for those who had internet uh, connection. And there was also a telephone number, a toll-free number, a website, and telephone operators who could provide uh, information and there are possibilities of, of uh, getting sheets to enroll in healthcare care centers. And M-Diabetes started off with a pilot stage, and this was particularly relevant during the period of Ramadan. It's called M-Ramadan, and that started in June 2014. There were 1,779 participants, and 35,000 text messages were sent before, during, and after Ramadan. We chose Ramadan because it is a time when healthcare professionals find that there are more complications. Obviously, there's a problem with blood sugar levels, which is because they don't have the same eating habits, they don't have the same uh, physical activity at that time. And diabetic patients, even though they're told they should not fast, continue to do so, and this has problems. And you've got all sorts of questions from patients. How do you manage to fast and manage diabetes? Can the, can the pharmaceuticals be uh, changed and the prescription changed? What sort of activity or what sort of diet? And so we had this M Ramadan program, and uh, 96% of people uh, questioned said that the messages received uh, helped them understand what was happening uh, with their fasting. And 100% of people interviewed wanted to keep uh, getting the text messages. And 95% said they were willing to recommend the service to the friends and, and relatives. Then there was the question of the technical feasibility. 99% of the text messages were received uh, and uh, around 80% were read by the person who got them or got the person got someone else to read them. Uh, so the technical feasibility was confirmed during the Ebola epidemic and because with the M-Diabetes platform, we were able to send out 4 million text messages to the general public to warn them about the dangers of Ebola and tell them what the preventive measures were. And this was all done through the M-Diabetes platform. And so the head of the uh, non-communicable disease uh, section of the WHO said that this uh, Is example in Senegal is a technological platform which shows uh, that it can be used for almost all types of disease, whether it's hemorrhagic fever or the common cold, and it justifies the ministers, the ministries of health to invest in it. And M diabetes, we have a huge communication plan. We've done it through the media, social networks, and uh, poster campaigns on buses. We saw the number of people registered for dry, uh, diabetes treatment went from. 1,779 in 2014, up to all the way up to 117,000 in 2017. And we got up to 160,000 people supporting the program just a few weeks ago. And we have the M Ramadan program operating at the moment this year. And we've had to uh, double, we've seen the doubling in the number of uh, healthcare professionals in the, following the program. And on the right, you can see uh, messages which a healthcare uh, professional received. 
received on how to manage type 2 diabetes. We've had uh, different types of campaigns. We've had one on diabetes in general. We had a campaign on nutrition, and we had a campaign on the diabetic foot. Now, this is interesting because it's been shown that 85% of amputations related to diabetes could be avoided if proper, simple preventive measures were taken. And these are the simple measures that we're sending out by SMS messaging to the target population. And I would like to point out that one amputation in our society costs more than $2,500. And then you have to add the price of the prosthetic limb. And uh, this could be avoided by sending out uh, uh, preventive messages. Uh, and it comes down to less than $100 per person. We had another campaign on diabetes and pregnancy, and we had the M. Ramadan campaign, which started in 2014. This year, Egypt and Tunisia followed our example, and the messages have been translated into Arabic. And so the messages, the text messages are sent out in Senegal, Egypt, and Tunisia. And this morning, I got the latest message, which was sent out. I can read it. It says, if in the middle of the day or your, in the afternoon your blood sugar is below 0.7, then break your fast fast, eat and report the event to your doctor. But that was not enough. We had to do more. Before you talk about revolution, we had to get uh, more than uh, more than clinical uh, references. Uh, it's not just a question of number of uh, people uh, registered or the campaigns or the number of text messages. The ministries wanted to have uh, more detailed analyses and uh, data to convince the partners of the validity of this approach. So we carried out an open randomized study, a comparative study, which was called the Impact Assessment of the Educational Program called M-Diabetes on the uh, glycemic balance of diabetic patients in Senegal. And we compared two groups of patients recruited in two, uh, uh, two centers. In the S center, the first group got uh, text messages between the first day and the end of the, th the third month. Uh, and then there was nothing between the third and the sixth month. In the second group, it was the opposite. They didn't get any text messages between uh, the beginning and the third month. And then and then they got uh, between the third and the sixth month. And we measured glycated uh, hemoglobin for all of them. And we compared that and got the following results. Uh, here we saw there was a significant uh, de decrease in glycated hemoglobin between uh, month zero and month three in the first group, and that was maintained at a significant level all the way through to the six months. And that is um, a valid difference compared to the second group. And these findings were published. It's just or will be published in the British Medical Journal. They've just been accepted for publication. I'd like to sum it up by saying that M diabetes is an example of how simple technology, such as sending out a text message on a mobile telephone, can really help uh, deal with much more complex problems of uh, public health, such as type 2 diabetes. And it's an excellent example of public-private partnership. There are plans for drawing up uh, more sophisticated strategies, such as uh, uh, two-directional uh, text messages so that patients can ask her questions and get an answer from a healthcare professional. We also have the possibility of uh, sending out vocal messages uh, so that illiterate uh, patients are not uh, left out of this. We know that we have to take up the challenge of how to make this an ongoing, viable program. Between 2014 and 2017, it was funded by WHO and the International Telecommunications Union. But as of 2018, the different uh, governments and partners will have to take over. We hope that this concept can become widespread and mainstreamed to all communicable, non communicable diseases and can be uh, reproduced in other countries. And we've had good news on the Friday, the 25th of May on World Health Day. The, there was a vote for resolution. The member states said that they would have digital technology adopted and Be Healthy, Be Mobile will be extended now to 40 countries that were previously just on the waiting list. We hope that uh, M diabetes will become M non-communicable disease. Thank you very much for your attention.